Warning, this channel is meant for viewers 21 plus and was created for educational and documentary purposes only. Beginner Buzz does not condone illegal activity and certainly does not sell anything. So don't even ask. Seriously. No facts. <laughs> yeah. I never take doubt as a lesson. I never second guess it. Take negativity. How's it growing, everyone? Well, it's finally time to get things on a schedule, and that's exactly what this week is all about. That said, this season was picked by, well, you. We held a few surveys asking which strains to plant, and you guys decided on Green Poison by Sweet Seeds and Purple Punch by Barney's Farm. As if that wasn't enough to get you excited, we just tried a new germination method that had a 100% success rate. 10 seeds down, 10 plants up. And we're about to show you how we did it. Oh, and one last thing, we also got a new light. So let's get into it and check things out. All right, guys, so as we previously said, we're trying to get our seasons on a schedule. Seeing how we're growing autoflowers, they typically take about 9 to 12 weeks to harvest. With that in mind, you should also know that we have three 4 foot by 4 foot areas able to grow a season in each. Three months, three tenths, a season every month. It just makes sense. Either way, we're not quite there, but we're starting to get things straightened out. We just finished season two and three, popped another round of beans, and have two areas open. Just like that, it was time to get to work. And that's exactly what we did. Now, just a reminder here, we've discussed that we're going to run a few seasons using bottled newts and cocoa. As we've explained, this seems to be the best way for beginners to grow, and seeing how this channel has so many beginners in its fan base, it only makes sense to help them get off the ground running when it comes to their first few grows. Where one could be in soil, the other could be in cocoa with the last in DWC buckets. In the end, we have so many people who want to see so many different things that we're just going to have to prioritize what's best for the largest number of our viewers. That said, we're doing just like last season using the General Hydroponics Flora Series Nutrient System. However, there is something new to our tents, and once again, it's all thanks to Mars Hydro. Come to find out, they thought we did so well with their TS-2000 model that they wanted to really show off what we could do with their TS-3000. Personally, Mars Hydro says this is the best rated for a 5 foot by 5 foot growing area, but really, it looks just about perfect for our 4 foot by 4 foot tent. Even better yet, they've also left plenty of cord to work with so that you can actually leave the power supplies outside of the tent, but still allow for the light to work. You used to have to bolt them to the top of the light, but now they can be placed outside and with it, the heat they generate as well. As always, Mars Hydro has equipped their power supply with dials so that you can adjust the brightness and intensity of their lights. Of course, we place them on ratcheting straps like always so that we can adjust their height as they'll be lowered during flower. However, it's pretty exciting to see a stronger, more powerful light in one of our tents that has allowed for a part that generates a large amount of heat to be left outside of the tent, making it easier for growers to control temps inside. Also like the season currently being run in another area, this one is done using a mixture of about 80% cocoa and 20% perlite. Depending on your budget, you can buy them pre-mixed or separately if you want to save a little coin. For us, that's exactly what we do. We're already there getting stuff ready. You might as well take the extra three minutes to mix it yourself and save yourself quite a few bucks. I will say though, 
Although we've never had a problem with pots drying out when it comes to using cocoa, we have had the issue before when we grew with soil. Never wanting this to happen ever again, we recently decided to try something new in hopes to allowing a little more airflow to both the roots and the medium. Just like that, we picked up a few square fabric pots off Amazon and put our freshly mixed medium inside. Of course, we'll link them in the description. Making sure the medium was moist before placing the seeds inside, we then grabbed the Green Poison XL Auto by Sweet Seeds and got to work. As most of you know, we've had a hard time figuring out what works best for us when it comes to germination. When we first started, we were using the paper towel method. Although the results were acceptable, we weren't exactly jumping for joy. That said, we sought out different methods by first tweaking the paper towel method, trying coffee filters instead of paper towels, and even going so far as to place them inside of a plastic bag during the germination process. Beyond that, we also tried starting our ladies in peat pods to which we had similar results to the paper towel method. Fortunately for us, there's another germination method, and not only is it our easiest method yet, but it's our most successful process as well. As you guys can imagine, we're always getting suggestions, constructive criticism, and downright insults every single week. Of course, some of this is helpful, but most of it's really not. But there's always been one suggestion that seemed just a bit too easy. After all, you know what they say, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is, right? Well, when you have some of the most experienced growers out there telling you to take this really detailed, hands-on technique, and someone else just says throw it in the dirt, it's easy to think that one is more quote-unquote advanced when it comes to the way that they're doing things. Too bad for us. We were wrong. We were so wrong again. Wanting to see if there was any merit behind the claims that we were overcomplicating things, we tried it their way. Simply put, we took a pair of tweezers, insert into the pot, leave the seed about a quarter inch below the surface of our medium before lightly covering it with a dusting of cocoa. With that done, we wet it down with a spray bottle, and we specifically use this for a reason. In our opinion, it's a pain in the butt. Our forearms get tired by the time you're done spraying everything down, and God forbid you have to refill in the middle of the process. However, it seems to be the most gentlest. In the end, we place the seed a specific way in our pots. Tip down. If you look at a cannabis seed, you can see that there are two distinct portions. We'll call them the tip and the back. The tip comes to a point. It's very obvious when you look at the seed, and this is actually where the taproot emerges from. The back works like a hinge on the seed. As we all know, the seed will crack in half, but the back portion remains attached. This is the back. Knowing all this, we want the taproot growing down. So we insert the seed into the medium with the tip down and the back pointed up toward the ceiling. Seeing how much work and thought goes into that, we don't need a heavy flow of water rushing down into our medium so hard that it disrupts things, potentially turning the seed, or worse, pushing it so far down that it can't get light and never emerges. With all that done, the plants go in the tent, but there's one more thing that we have found to be absolutely crucial, and that's a heater. Remember guys, if the temps in your tent go too far down, the seeds won't know that it's time to emerge. We want them to think that it's spring, and what comes with that? Warmer weather. Furthermore, keep in mind that the natural evaporation of water on a seed will make it cooler than the air temp around it. So make sure you're keeping things at at least 75 degrees Fahrenheit at the bare minimum. With the green poison in the tent, it was time to prep some pots for our next winners, Purple Punch by Barney's Farm. Unlike the green poison though, we're running the purple punch in our regular plastic five gallon pots. Remember guys, we start right in the forever home when you're growing autos. As they're on their own time schedule, anything that can slow them down can hurt your end yields, and that includes things like transplant shock. Trying to prevent that, we go right for the pots they'll use all the way through flower. Just like that green poison though, 
We attempted germination the same way, directly into the medium, tipped down, and kept moist by gentle misting spray bottle. So how exactly did we do? Well, we got 100% germination, you guys. Not only was this the simplest and easiest germination method we have ever tried, it was the most successful. Now, we do have to say here that our first season we did get 100% germination with the paper towel, but this just seemed to be so much easier. We were less stressed out, the plants seemed less stressed out, things are absolutely great, and that's exactly what we set out to do. Find out what works best for us. And to be honest, we think this is going to work out for a long time. One last thing, remember, just water here. Cannabis seedlings have enough energy to last them the first two weeks of their life on just water and light alone. They don't need anything else, so don't force it down their throats. Just lock in that light and everything else should fall in line. Alright guys, all ten babies are up and at them and it's only a matter of time before they're off to the races. Make sure you check in next week as we finally conclude both seasons two and three of our Pineapple Express and C4 by Fast Bud Genetics. Of course, if you guys can't wait until then, feel free to head over to any one of our social and media accounts for some additional fun, or just shoot us a message to talk. Most of you know that we'll respond. Anyways, we'll catch up with you guys next week, and as always, until then, keep learning, keep growing. Catch you later, guys. Tell me what is wrong with that? No coins in the laundry, man. You can't help but honor that. Jam, man, make a man. More gears in the Sega, man. Jam, man, make a man. More gears in the Sega, man. I am the great saying. You better stop playing, man.